Hi, my name is Willie. In this video, we're talking about the engine going on in this rear mower. Okay, hang on. I have a huge mess out here today. That's going to go back on the shed. All those tools need to get put away. It's just an overall mess right now. Still got to figure out something with the propane for that thing, so there's your update. <laughs> got my 10 horse back. It's all been bored out. New piston rings and gaskets. Carburetor was rebuilt. Uh, wait on a part for the fuel pump to rebuild the fuel pump. I was thinking about putting a diaphragm fuel pump on here and put a blanking plate and just hook up a line here. Uh, only reason I'm not doing that is because the fuel pump that was on here has a nice primer lever on it, which I'm going to keep on here. Uh, that way I can prime the fuel up to it, which will be nice. So I thought I would just keep that little tidbit with the engine. So it's been bored 30 over. So I'm sure you're probably wondering what's going on over here. Well, this is going to pose a problem as for the rear mower because there's no magneto. I have to have 12 volts to this. So I'm thinking, well, what am I going to do with that? Do I really want to put a plugs in with switches on the rear mower? And I had an idea, a real aha moment. This gives me an opportunity to do something interesting. Okay. I'm going to set this up with a trailer plug on the tractor. I'm going to use this round plug so because none of our other trailers have this, so there's no way for this to get plugged into a trailer, at least around here by accident, and screw something up. So I'm going to have a tractor control the ignition so I can shut the engine off when I want to, as well as hook up a charging circuit just like trailer brakes. So I just need this little tiny battery for... Uh, just storage so I can run it when it's not hooked up to the tractor and it'll charge when it's hooked up to the tractor. Another thing I want to even a step further is I want to be able to control this from the tractor. So I have my kill here. I'm going to rig through the tractor. I put this little doodad on here. Now you might recognize one of these as a fuel shut off for a diesel. So let me turn this around so I can get a better look at it. Okay. We're going to talk about how these work as well because there's three wires on. There's no videos as to how these things work. So I'll just add that in here. So hang on. Let me turn this around. It's heavy. Because it's all cast iron. That's cast iron. The base is cast iron. <laughs> Everything's cast iron in this thing. They're heavy. The flywheel's cast iron. I think the, the few parts that aren't cast iron is the aluminum carburetor and the aluminum parts inside. Everything else is cast iron. In case you hadn't noticed, it was heavy. <laughs> so, hang on. Okay. This is a diesel fuel, fuel rail cutoff or shutoff. This one's one kind of like what's used on the Bobcat skid steers. And I got the bracket with it. It wasn't that expensive. But I'm not going to go quite in pr quoting prices because I'm not going to be the one to get yelled at for being wrong. So like I can say this was less than 50 bucks. <laughs> That's about it. Uh, not super expensive. Came with the brackets. Uh, there's some other hardware that came with it over here. There's another piece here, which I'm not going to be using. You can go with the... Oh, let me redo that. I can go in with the extra stuff. <laughs> uh, I got some oil for the engine as well. Uh, I'm gonna be running an AMS oil 1030 in it for small. That's just specifically designed for small engines. So this is gonna be my throttle. I use I used a braided line, which is gonna be hard to tell if it's braided. Uh, maybe I get the light on it just right, but it's a braided cable, not a solid cable, so it's very pliable. When I run this over to the other side of the engine, it won't have that much resistance on it because I want this thing to be able to snap back down to idle. I put a stop here, so when that thing's at the end of its travel, it can't crush the cable down here. And this piece is here is adjustable, as well as the stud back in here is adjustable. Okay, so as you can see, that's my cable travel. You can see right here is this cable right here goes in and out. This will also have governor spring tension on it, so I have the strange tension here with the shut off, and the tension on the governor will be on the other end. So what we have here is three wires. Black is ground. White is going to be our high amp or our high circuit. That's going to be the circuit that's going to pull this all the way in, and then the red circuit is the circuit that uh, holds it in the low end circuit. So you'd, it's high amperage for the white and low amperage for the red. So I'm going to use relays to, I'm not sure if I'm going to need two relays or one relay. I've got to write out the wiring for this thing yet. I'm going to have a push button on the tractor to kick the throttle up. And when I step in the brake pedal, it's going to deactivate the 12 volts going to this to keep it in the 
keep it in the closed position. So when I step in the brake, it'll go back down to an idle. If everything works properly, I gotta change the switch in the tractor so I have a second circuit on the brake pedal. So let me see if I can't get the camera set up to show you this thing working. Okay, so hang on. Now I gotta slide from this one blade to this other. So that'd be the white. As soon as you let go of the white, it snaps back to low speed. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go swap from the high lead, which is this white wire. And I'm going to swap over to this red lead, which is the low amp circuit. Okay, ready? See, now I'm on the low amp, and it's holding it. You getting all that? I think you're getting all that. So you can't tell me that's not interesting. <laughs> it's going to be fun. It's going to be really fun. When all, when all is done. So if you enjoyed that video, make sure you give me a thumbs up and stay tuned for when this thing gets put on that track.